right, today I have a 2003 Aviator, and it has an AC concern where it just never cools down. It has the proper charge in it. The guy put a new AC compressor on, and still no go. Now what's going on here, when you hook up the gauges, you can see it's off right now. But come on a second. And when it comes on, watch for it. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Comes on. High side barely climbs. And the low side drops there. Okay. This is with proper charge level. So at this point, we need to go in. We need to go into the TXV and see what's going on. Another indication is when the vehicle is turned off, the high side and the low side do not equalize um, for a very long time. Okay, we just shut the vehicle off and look at it. Okay, so we're right around 100 on the high side and we're just sitting pretty, not really moving on the low side here. These should be slowly climbing and slowly dropping, okay, as this equalizes through the system. Either FOT system or a TXV system, it will equalize. Now this is gonna equalize eventually, but you can tell right here, they're sitting, they're taking their time. It's gonna probably be a half an hour before it equalizes. It should equalize within a few minutes. Minute, two minutes, it'll equalize. About the same pressure. Look at this. It's taken forever to climb and drop when it's equalizing. So another good indication that TXV uh, is of concern, either the screen or the valve itself. Okay, so here's a system diagram that'll give you a better indicator of exactly what's going on here. Now this vehicle had no cooling ability at all. The compressor would come on for you know five seconds or so, you saw it. Once it came on, the low side gauge just dropped. The low pressure cycling switch cut the system off and the, the cycle repeated. Now the high side gauge, it barely rose up above 100 or so. Very slow to climb, did not really do anything at all. And that was a clear indication that there was a restriction in the system. And there was a restriction close to the compressor. And the way I figured that was, think about it, it's dropping so fast, it has the proper charge level, um, and this side is not able to build, okay? So it means it's not being fed refrigerant. It's just that simple. Now, the other thing is we had no cooling in the cabin, mainly because the compressor would only come on for a very short period of time, so not enough refrigerant came through the evaporator coil here to make that heat transfer and then take it back out, the low side here, okay? Now, the other indicator was the, the high side gauge and the low side gauge would not equalize when the system turned off. The system is free flowing except for the TXV. This is a metering device that, that separates the high side and the low side. And it's gonna stay open to an extent even when the system is off. It's all based on temperature in the outlet side here. Okay, so it should be able to flow through and equalize these two high and low sides. So that was another good indicator. At that point, a very you know thorough uh, visual of all these lines, okay, and the, the tubes in the condenser, all that was, was needed to make sure there was no restriction in the system. At that point, it's time to suck the system down and start looking around. You wanna look inside there, either a line, discharge side of the compressor, to make sure that there's no desiccant that's floating around here causing a restriction, okay? Especially in the condenser. Or, um, and the compressor didn't come apart. The compressor comes apart, they usually sh you know, shoot a bunch of metal throughout the system, and they'll plug up um, these very small passageways, and especially the orifice, okay? So the easiest way to do that in this system would be to um, take off the TXV, it's right there, and then you can look at all your high and low sides and check for that debris. And then once you take it off, you can do a thorough visual of it. And we noticed that pintle inside of here was it just falling out. So therefore, it never opened up and allowed the refrigerant to come past it, feed the evap, cool the vehicle down, take that heat with it, and run back out the cool side 
uh, the, the low pressure side here and then start the process over again. So as you can see, just by you know checking a few different things, paying attention to different gauge readings, we can tap into the circuit and really see what's going on. I need that visual to make a confirmed you know, um, diagnosis and that gave it to me by looking at this internally and the gauges. Now the reason why the last, I don't know why the last uh, mechanic looked at it and thought it was a compressor because when a compressor fails, okay, and it's weak, you'll have low high side pressures, yes, that's what we have on this one, but you'll also have high low side pressures because it's not generating that draw on the low side to bring it down to 25, 35 PSI. It'll be around 50 or 60. Um, so that was a misdiagnosis on their part. Um, but we got it identified and uh, that's what's going on. And that's how I was able to zero in on the TXV. All right, we have a fix. Earlier we diagnosed through system pressure diagnosis that the TXV was bad. And we knew that because mainly because the system would not equalize after you turn the key off. And that valve is the gatekeeper between the high and the low side. So I scoured the earth to find a new TXV from Motorcraft. I got one overnighted up here, swapped it in. Luckily, it's very easy to get in there and change it out. And now, look at our system pressures. So we have our low side and our high side. 150 is about right. Most Ford TXV systems are around 150, okay? Now low side TXV or FOT system is gonna be right in this region, 25 to 35 generally, okay? And you can see our TXV is keeping it right there, okay? It'll constantly adjust, keep the pressure on the low side just right. Therefore, you'll see these pressures are pretty much staying the same. There isn't much cycling with a TXV system. Not to mention, down in here, we can look at the compressor, clutch on there, and you can see it's on. The system is on, it's pumping refrigerant, and it's not cycling off all the time anymore. Therefore, it's pumping it throughout the system, and more importantly, it's pumping it throughout the EVAP inside the cabin, so we can have that heat transfer and get that heat out of the cabin and back over here and the cycle repeats, okay? So let's show you what my system, uh, my vent temp is now on this car. Before, it sat right around uh, 80 or so. 75, 80, wasn't doing anything because the compressor would come on, start pumping, and shut off. So it never pushed enough through to have that heat transfer, okay? Right there, look at that, 32, jeez. The diagnosis in the end, when we turn the system off, was the key. So watch this one when I turn the system off, when I turn the vehicle off. Okay. So you see how they're continually rising and continually dropping? They're equalizing. They're able to equalize through that TXV. Now, it is a metered orifice in there, and that bulb inside of there is going to slowly change that opening in there. So on TXV systems, it does take a little bit longer uh, compared to an FOT system that's constantly open. It's just a metered uh, tube inside of there. So you'll see this one. They'll constantly rise and constantly drop until both the high and the low side equalize. Before, it just sat there at 30 and what was like 100 and never really moved. I mean, for like an hour, it just never moved. This one, it'll equalize in like a minute or two. It'll be equalized. So that was the big indicator. There was a blockage in the system. And of course, there was no kinked lines or anything like that. Okay, so we identified the culprit. We replaced the TXV. Pressures are great. Cooling in the cabin is unbelievable. So what happened to this other TXV, this old one right here? There's no damage to it, okay? The desk skin bag did not break open. The compressor did not come apart plugging anything in here. So why did it fail, okay? 
I don't know exactly. I have one theory. I took apart the valve down here and I noticed the pintle on this sensing bulb right here that actuates the pintle to depress the valve in there that is held in place and closed by a spring just kind of fell out. And I'll show you here in a second. So that told me that this sensing bulb had no control over that pintle anymore and therefore could not depress that valve in here and open it up so we can get flow. So it all made sense to me, plus the pressures while I was running, short cycling times, going uh, extra low on the low side and cutting off. And then of course our um, static pressures, when we turn the system off, they would take forever to equalize. Three good indicators that the TXV had failed. All right, so here's the old TXV, and this is considered a uh, TXV block or uh, the Chrysler H valve they used to call them. Uh, basically, what it allows is for the you know the diaphragm, the sensing bulb, the pencil, the metering device, everything to be all within this block right here. It makes it great for automotive AC systems. So here's a diaphragm up here and a sensing bulb and everything inside of here. It's all encased inside of there. And this is the way it goes on the system. So this is the inlet side. Um, that's going to cause the restriction in the system there, drop our pressures, and feed that EVAP. Okay, and here is the outlet side. So we can keep sensing the outlet side, and based on the outlet side temperature, it's going to adjust the pressure down on uh, this spring and um, seat inside here. I'll take it apart here in a second. So this is constantly adjusting based on the temperature that refrigerant flowing past and coming out of the EVAP, okay? And these are just a bunch of uh, sensing switches and stuff like that uh, for the system to control it. So this right here, which, you know, I don't take these apart every day, but I did a little research. Um, down here is an adjustable plug on here for your superheat spring so that you can attain the right superheat um, for your system. So of course it has a seal on, a bunch of fine threads, okay? And then it's just a regular spring and a seat. So you can see a seat right there, and that's all there is to it down here. So when you adjust the depth on here and the tension on the spring uh, to adjust your superheat. So if you ever get one of these, you see it half unscrewed out of there. Oh, I don't know, half out of there, and you're like, oh, it didn't tighten away from the factory. Well, guess what? It's adjusted and set from the factory. Don't touch it. <laughs> okay, so anyways, so right down inside of there, that's that pintle on the other end of this uh, whole sensing bulb and diaphragm, okay? And as it increases in pressure in here, it's going to push pressure down onto this right here, okay? So it'll push pressure right down into that where it seats and blocks the flow refrigerant and it'll compress. And as it compresses, it allows more and more refrigerant to go right through here and whack you in the head, out the other side uh, to feed your EVAP, okay? So this is what I found on this one. Everything looks clean. The system was not full of, you know, metal and pieces from a failed compressor or a failed desiccant bag. There's no, it is clean, look, it's clean. That's regular dye in the oil in the system. It's beautiful. Okay, this is what I found. Not sure this is right, but this is the one thing that kind of felt weird. Well, there, there you have it right there. Is that supposed to happen? This is the pintle inside of there, okay, that goes up into there. And it kind of fell out way too easy, okay? It just, it's, it's in here. I tipped it over and it kind of went whoop, and just kind of fell out. Didn't seem right at all. I push it back in at you at will. And it just didn't matter. Now this should be, you know, pressurized in some sort of way and therefore pressing down on it. Okay. So that was another indicator. And I don't know if that was right or wrong because I don't take these apart every day. There's no instructions. Hey, you got a failed TXV, you replace it, right? Um, but I thought that was kind of weird. And the new one, I did check it on a new one, and it didn't move in there very much at all. Um, so 
um, looking at it, making sure that nothing was caught up in here causing any concerns. The spring had not failed. Um, the cup had not failed. You know, the seat on here. All kinds of stuff like that. You can still get a lot of great information out of the TXV. Um, you know, it's a good place for debris and stuff like that to catch. Like this whole area in here. Okay, it'd be just, it'd be all caught up in here. Look at that, it's clean. It's beautiful. Um, so, we knew at that point there was a restriction and it was not allowing it to flow in. And of course, it could not come out and feed the compressor. Um, so, this is very, very expensive. Um, but the last guy that worked on this put an AC compressor in here, and that was about $500. This was about $165, and it was the correct fix. So that's about it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. You know, it's nice diagnosing different things instead of the same old, same old. Um, I don't, you don't see TXVs fail too often, um, but this one is a classic example of a failed TXV. And it was mainly diagnosed just by a manifold gauge set and watching those pressures and seeing, you know, what's going on in the system. And think of it as a voltmeter for um, the AC system. You can see what's going on in those circuits in there. Soon, I will be letting you guys know about some great, new, exciting information uh, here on the channel. Until then, I'll see you next time, guys.